Hello, my name is Mikonino, Director of Online Learning, and I would like to share with you as part of our final module for this certificate in online teaching excellence, some issues, trends, and of course, some thoughts about the future of online learning as a way of telling you what direction the field is moving in and what should you be expecting. As many of you know, this was a game changer experience and COVID-19 obviously brought a lot of negative things to our life, to our world, but it really changed the game for online learning because it forced all of us to think about how it can be done online. I think before COVID-19, there were some hesitations. Online learning was seen as something by some faculty members that they would not do, that they were not going to be able to do. But because of COVID-19, now we know that more, more things than what we think can be done in an online classroom. It's just a matter of being creative. It's just a matter about designing with intention and about following the right pedagogical strategies. I have always said that online teaching is just another hat to wear. Sometimes there is an antagonism between teaching face-to-face -face and teaching online, a comparison if one is better than the other. And I have always said that online teaching is just another way of teaching. Sometimes in the classroom we have to lecture, sometimes we have to facilitate, sometimes we have just to guide a discussion or provide feedback because the students are working on a project. They are being hands-on. And online teaching is just another way of delivering content. Many things have to change, I agree with you. The assessments have to be different. The design of the course might have some alterations. You might have to rely more on technology to be able to make it ha happen. But online teaching should not take away from you your value as an instructor. It's just another way that you have to deliver that content. And even if you feel that you're not going to be having as much as the direct contact that you're currently having with your students, you still have a very important role in the classroom. And that's something that I want you to keep in mind. Regardless of the modality, you have a very important in the classroom because you are the person mastering uh, the process, you're the person managing the process and you're making those decisions about what content and how it should be delivered for your students. One thing that I tell a faculty is that teaching online is more than adding files to a folder in Canvas and then asking the students to look for that. I think that's a mistake that we have all made at some point in online teaching. And this is one of the reasons why students feel that the experience is not the same. Because in a face-to-face -face classroom, faculty talk directly to the students. They are there to answer questions, to provide feedback, to be interact interacting with them. And when you just add files and you ask them to read, read this document, read chapter four, and then complete this quiz, they really are missing out a lot. And I think in this course, in this certificate that you have just taken, you can tell that we were not just asking you to read content uh, or just watch a video or just read a handout. We really made you interact with us. We wanted you to provide feedback to others, to be part of a community, to have interaction with the instructor, and overall to have multiple opportunities to demonstrate mastery of knowledge. And that's something that you should take into account when you are redesigning your courses. One of the lessons that COVID-19 left to us and that really changed the landscape in the field is that now we should have very clear the difference between emergency remote teaching and online teaching. What we did earlier this semester, for the most part, was emergency remote teaching. You had to find a creative way to halfway the semester find a way to put content in an online format and make it available to students. That's not an easy task. And I think you did a good job overall here at, our, at UNCP, but that was an emergency situation. You were just making sure you finished the semester, you put the content online, you help students convert what was left from the semester to an online uh, format, 
but that's not really online teaching. Online teaching can be compared to what you just experienced in this course. From the beginning, from scratch, everything was designed and thought for the online classroom. So this really makes the point that you sometimes will have to teach in a different way because the way you teach face-to-face -face a course might not be able to, to, to happen or might not be suitable in an online classroom. So you will really have to rethink about the way your assessments, your content, your lecture, your technology play a role. But that doesn't mean that it's less rigorous or it doesn't mean that it's not as good. Actually, in my experience, online courses can be as good as face-to-face -face courses. It's just that sometimes they are poorly designed. And this is one of the things that we want you to take away from this certificate. Strategies to redesign a course in a very effective way. What you saw in this certificate will prepare you to do online teaching because everything that you have learned here is based on sound pedagogical knowledge and strategies. Whenever you have just to put something online for them to just finish the best possible way, that's emergency remote teaching. This being said, the Office of Online Learning can definitely help you to do online teaching because from the moment you start planning your course, we can be part of the brainstorming session and make sure that you follow all the principles that we have shared. For instance, backward design. Our goal and the goal in online learning in general is that online has the same benefits that face to face. So in your mind, you have to make sure that all the resources that your face to face students have, your online students, they, ha they have them as well. And this is very important because sometimes we just focus in the, in the course, but online students, they want to see that they have access to other UNCP resources that they have access to tutoring, that they have access to their advisor and faculty member with the same frequency as a face-to-face -face student. Online students want to feel that they can have professional development, workshops, that their orientations can be as good as the face-to-face -face ones. So it's a, it's a lot of work and it's an initiative that is going to take a lot of resources and a lot of time and I think all of us can start moving into that direction. One of our goals is to help the whole UNCP community to translate any resources that we have for the face-to-face -face students to our online students. So as you redesign your courses, also think about what other resources my face-to-face -face students are enjoying or taking advantage of that my online students are not and how can I help or how can I partner with other offices, including the Office of Online Learning, to translate those resources and make them available to online students. It's in that exactly part, in that exact part, that we see a level of retain, uh, retainment in those online students. When they see that they have the same resources and the same sense of belonging, that the face-to-face -face students, they tend to continue the programs and finish their programs. Our goal also is to have more asynchronous courses. And when we say full asynchronous courses, it's that modality in which students can work at their own self you know, pace. And this is very important because many students who want to do online, they need the flexibility. In our opinion, asynchronous courses are the most challenging ones to develop and they also leave you a lot of a room to, to be flexible. If for any reason you can't have reliable internet or you need to be away for a couple weeks, you don't have to necessarily worry because students have a whole week or so to complete courses at their own pace. So that's, that's definitely the preferred method for many students. It doesn't mean that that's the only way in which you can teach an online course. Obviously, you can do synchronous or you can do hybrid, but there is an expectation from the marketing standpoint that students tend to look more and more for those asynchronous courses. So if you really want to think about ways in how you can increase your numbers and enrollment in, in students, definitely consider asynchronous courses. Also, one thing that we want to start moving away from is the need to proctor exams. 
in a fully online course, a student should not have to come to campus to do anything, not even to take an exam. So definitely you have to start thinking about ways, about presenting an exam that doesn't require proctoring. The quiz that you are going to take this week, it's one of those uh, mechanisms. It's designed in such a way that proctoring is not required. The way we formatted the questions, the way that we presented the questions, the way we timed them, it's all to avoid the need to have a proctor exam. So again, keep in mind that many of your students can be in other countries, in other parts of the, uh, of the country, and it will be difficult for them and they might be hesitant to enroll in a course if they know that they have to come here for some non-proctor exams, uh, proctor exams, I'm sorry. So keep that in mind. And again, as we start doing this, we're gonna be moving into fully online programs. And that's exactly what we want. We want to have more programs at UNCP that are fully online, that I can be in another country, in another state, and I can complete the whole thing online. And I think when you don't have fully online programs, and this is something that research has demonstrated, you lose, there's a market that you lose. Many students are looking for these programs and these programs fully online already exist. So it puts you in a marketing this disadvantage when you don't offer more fully online programs or courses. And we cannot talk about online teaching and learning without talking about compressed courses. Compressed courses, basically, it's when you have a course that is 15 weeks, your traditional you know, length, and you have to condense that and put all the content, same content, same quality, in half that, or you know, three weeks sometimes. It really depends on uh, your assignment. But it's really important to know that compressed course are a trend, it's something that many students want, and it's something that many schools around the world are doing. And research and numbers have demonstrated that there's a high, higher level of retention and completion in those compressed courses. Uh, and the reason why, it's because there is more of a focused content. Students can focus on one content, one course at a time. But in one semester, sometimes you finish two courses instead of one, so they see more progress as well. You have to understand that many of the uh, people in your classroom are going to be working adults. Some of them, even if they are uh, fully uh, online, full time, they might be also engaging in other activities like work and they tend to, to prefer those uh, compressed uh, programs. So that's why it's important to cater to them Think about prior learning assessments. They are very important because many of your students online are going to be coming back to school after other life experiences like work or certifications of other type of learning uh, activities that they were involved, other type of professional activities and this is an opportunity to start using those uh, assessments. When you have a compressed course and you have just to focus on what really matters, if you have these prior learning assessments, you might be placing students in the right course and they might just be applying everything that they learn towards that, that course. And I think everybody feels that they are using everything that they have to complete their education. So please consider the prior learning assessments as you think about online teaching and learning. Also, it's very important to talk about 21st century skills. They are known as the four C's. A good course should have creativity, collaboration, communication, and especially critical thinking, and that's, that's why it's in this box. Basically, what you want is to foster these skills. Any content that you're providing, anything that you're teaching in your course, make sure you provide to your students opportunities to foster these skills. These skills are very important to succeed in the working place, to be a competitive professional, to be a competitive citizen. And this is something that schools and programs are really looking into. There's a whole body of research and knowledge about the four C's. So again, make sure when you are putting content, building those assessments, creating those projects, 
asking your students to do something in the online classroom, make sure you're always fostering at least some of these four skills, creativity, collaboration, communication, and especially critical thinking. And we cannot talk about these skills without the need for authentic assessments. If you want to foster the four C's, you need to rethink the way your assessments are. You cannot just be relying on multiple choice. You have to do things that are outside of that. So make sure you provide assessments that make your students feel that they're having a meaningful connection to real life experiences and scenarios. They really want to make sure there's some relevance in your content. So find ways in which your content has connection to real life experiences and trends. Also, you can focus on learning contracts. Many of your students might want to take different uh, directions. Some of them would like to go to grad school. Others would like to get a job. Others would like to work for a nonprofit. So you can negotiate a portion of the course. It doesn't have to be the whole course, but you can negotiate a portion of your course. So students can work on a project that is useful for them, that is going to help them go wherever they want to go, but also provides an opportunity to demonstrate knowledge. Also, simulations and games are huge. In some instances, there's some hesitation about the online classroom because students don't get hands-on or they cannot witness a process or they don't get to interact in a particular space like a hospital or a military base, for instance. Simulations and games provide a safe space for students to be virtually in these spaces, to get to know what it is to be in a hospital, to work as a practitioner, to be in a classroom. Sometimes you can travel back in time and see what a building or monument looks like. It really takes you virtually to wherever you need to be. And when you are having challenges because your students, they need to be physically somewhere and the course is online, simulations and games can definitely help you there. So this is something to consider. And again, your students, they need to know that there is a guarantee of transfer of knowledge. They want to know how your course is going to help them later on. Never forget to tell them in this course, in this lesson, you're going to learn about this and this is useful for this and that. It really varies according to the course, but this is a marketing way to keep them engaged as well. When you tell them the value of your course, they will be more connected and they will see that everything that they are doing is going to help them gain specific skills. The good news is that open education helps. As you could see in this course, you definitely did not need to create all the content. We put many of the things that they are already out there. There is a huge learning community out there willing to help each other. And people create content, but they make it available for others to use. So it's on you to spend some time researching, curating elements and finding those resources that you need. Open Education allows you to use textbooks for free, to use recorded lectures that others have created for you, and also to get templates or assets in, for an online course that you not necessarily uh, find or that it will take a lot of time and money to create. So discuss with us because every course is different, opportunities for open education. If you are trying to put together a course and there are some resources that you need, but for some reason you cannot develop them, you don't have the technology or you don't have the budget, Meet with us because we have the ability to find open education resources for you if needed. And the last thing that I want to say is that you have to keep learning. These changes every year, every six months, every two years, something is going to be completely different. New things are going to happen that they are going to keep changing the nature of online teaching and learning. Our students are evolving. They want more, better. They are going to become familiar with new technologies and they would like to use some of them, if not all of them, in their courses. So as a faculty member, it will be good for you to keep learning 
because this really changed fast. There is always something new, something better, something free, and you have to take advantage of all of that. Of course, we are going to be here to help you keep learning. We are going to continue offering professional development opportunities with a teaching and learning center to make sure that you keep learning and evolving and growing in the field and that you can be the best possible online instructor for your students. This is my contact information. It has been a pleasure working with you uh, this summer and I'm looking forward to continuing this collaboration and partnerships. Have a great day.